Hi, my name is Scott, the Miniature Maniac, and today we're going to explore the world of inks and all they can do for you. Reminds me of the UPS slogan, what can brown do for you? What can inks do for you? What up, Mini Family? Inks are a weird hobby product. At face value, they seem kind of like a mixture of bad properties. Poor coverage and intensely glossy. So what are they good for? Absolutely nothing. Well, let's first discuss the difference in makeup and also the properties when compared to normal acrylic paint. Very often, inks are a dye that's been chemically dissolved into some medium. However, this is not always the case. On the other hand, paint is often a physical particulate, like a pigment, suspended in a clear medium. Inks are often designed to sink into the surface of something as opposed to layering on top of something like paint. Ink has much higher flow with a viscosity of something similar to water, whereas paint has a wide variety of viscosities, but most often is significantly thicker than water. Ink oftentimes is always translucent, meaning no matter how many layers you apply, you'll always see the undercoat. Whereas with paint, generally after three to four layers, you've fully obscured your undercoat. There are, however, some inks that have better coverage than others, and you can find this designated on some artist grade inks with a symbol like this. When it comes to finish, inks often have a satin to glossy finish, whereas acrylic paint is all over the spectrum. Lastly, inks are often very rich in their pigmentation, meaning you have to thin them a lot because the saturation is very intense. Okay, so now we know the basic differences between ink and paint, which we're all more familiar with. What do these differences enable us to do? Well, these are the six main things that I've found. Number one, ink has intense saturation of color without coverage. If I have a pattern on my model that I want to tint with color, I can do that with ink without obscuring the texture below. An example of this would be a zenithal undercoat. I have a gradient of white to black on my model and I want to maintain that while also giving some color to the miniature. And make no mistake, this is not just some color. You can build up incredibly intense color without obscuring the texture below, whereas with acrylic paints, the more layers you add, the more saturated it gets, but also the more it obscures the underlying surface. Maybe I'm building up texture on a model, like on some roughened up leather armor or denim jeans. I can maintain that texture and still give it the color it needs. Number two, because of these translucency, inks mate for great glazes and tints when applied with a paintbrush or an airbrush. Oftentimes, when you thin down ink a lot and apply it over a matte paint range like scale 75, you get a really nice satin effect in your shadows. This can help to offer up an additional kind of contrast. Instead of being light and darkness contrast, however, it's contrast of finish. For example, super matte highlights and nice and satin shadows. Number three, inks have high flow and high saturation. Edge highlighting and recess shading are tricky techniques to master because you need to get the right dilution of your paint. It needs to flow off your brush easily without having to wrestle with it, but also can't be too translucent because you don't want to have to keep going back to the same edge or recess and redoing them. This increases the chance that you may make a mistake. Enter in inks. Say you need to recess shade something with black. Instead of thinning your black paint with water to get more flow, instead thin your black paint with black ink. This way you have nice flow and your color is still very dark. On the flip side, say you need an edge highlight color. Take your base tone and mix in some white ink. Now you have an edge highlight paint that is nice and opaque and also has great flow. Let's kind of sit on this idea of mixing acrylic paints and inks a little bit longer. Whenever you want better flow, but don't want to sacrifice opacity and also intensity of color, mixing inks into your acrylic paint is a real solution. I know painters like Rodrigo Okore who oftentimes mix inks into their acrylic paint to develop shadows for their midtones. Can you do this with normal acrylic paint? Most likely, but maybe ink is just a faster way to get to the end result because you don't need to apply multiple layers because you're not sacrificing things like color intensity and also opacity. 
However, before we move on to more inky goodness, let's hear a word from our sponsor today, and that's Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with a ton of different classes covering a wide variety of creative and entrepreneurial skills. Skillshare is a great place to engage in your curiosity, creativity, and even further your career. I know for me personally, I'm always looking for ways to improve my videos. So I was drawn to this making the most of B-roll class by Nikki Stevens to spice up my B-roll segments. But maybe for the mini family, you guys are more interested in sculpting your own miniatures with things like ZBrush or using more traditional methods. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to all the Skillshare communities so you can learn how to sculpt minis, or maybe even learn how to airbrush. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable. You can get an annual subscription for less than $10 a month. And because Skillshare is sponsoring this episode, members of the mini family can get two whole months of Skillshare classes for free by following the link in the video description. Thanks for sponsoring this episode, Skillshare. Now back to the inks. Number four, you can mix inks with other hobby products and get nice color while still being translucent. Most notably, you can do it with things like Uhu glue when doing stringy gooey effects or something like Mod Podge Dimensional Magic or Vallejo Stillwater. I can create a nice simple watery effect while still maintaining my translucency. Number five, people can make washes with inks. The reason why inks kind of find themselves a more key ingredient to washes than acrylic paint is their relationship between flow and saturation, but also the glossiness helps the wash to kind of sink into the recesses a little bit more. Admittedly, I've never done this, so I had to give it a shot. I mixed some water, flow improver, matte medium, and ink and got a pretty good wash on the cheap. Admittedly, in this example, I probably added too much flow improver, but that's easily fixed. Number six, inks come out of an airbrush like a dream. Oftentimes, the problem with airbrushes is speckling. You might get this when layering one color over another, especially white over black. With inks, the problem is much less apparent because it applies more smoothly. Because of this, I often find myself using white semi-opaque ink for applying my zenithal highlights as opposed to using white paint. But this can be extended to other things. Say you base coated something in a brown tone and you wanna highlight it. Mix in white and maybe a touch of yellow ink to your original base tone and bang, you have a nice highlight color that's applying more smoothly than if you had used white and yellow acrylic paints. I thought of a bonus reason why inks are great. Metallics. With inks, you can mix great metallic colors. Gone are the days of needing colored metallics. If I want a green metallic color, I can just mix green ink with my silver or simply glaze green ink on top of silver if it's already dried. If I want a darker silver, I can mix in black ink. Ink works better than any acrylic paint in this scenario because of its translucency. Acrylic paint has a tendency to really muddle the sparkly nature of metallic paints, whereas ink does not. In this last year or so, I've really discovered the value of ink and I've been trying to find more ways to incorporate them. Do you guys have a ways of using ink that I haven't mentioned here? Share them in the comment section so that we can all learn together. That's gonna do it for this video, guys. Thanks for checking out the channel. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel and you wanna support it, there's a variety of ways for you to do that, namely a Patreon campaign with a bunch of fun rewards, merchandise like this black metal Miniac logo t-shirt, and also shopping on Amazon using my affiliate link. All things linked in the description below. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to pay